it's Miss Bree here with the Dickinson County Nature Center. Today I'm here to teach you a little bit about our moth friends. A lot of times the moths of the world get overlooked by something that looks very similar to them, our butterflies. Uh, the really cool thing is there are way more butterfly or way more moths in the world than butterflies. Um, however, moths are nighttime creatures, they're nocturnal. While butterflies are daytime creatures, they're diurnal. So a lot of times when we're out exploring, we get to see the colorful, beautiful butterflies the world had to off offer. Uh, and we miss out on the unique world of moths because usually we're asleep when they're out. So some differences. I'm going to start by comparing these two animals. So. We have our moth right here and we have our butterfly. They have a lot of similarities. So let's start with their similarities. They both have wings, right? They both have three body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. They both have six legs. They're both insects studied by entomologists, which are insect scientists. But what are some of their differences? So they both have antenna, but are their antenna the same or different? So if you look closely at our moth, you can see that they have very feathery antenna. Uh, whereas you can see here, our butterfly have really straight antenna. Now let's go down to their bodies. Hmm, let's look closely at this body. So as you can see, it's very hairy. It's a little more rounded. Uh, and not as elongated. Whereas here you look and you can see that they have a very elongated abdomen, um, but it's not as hairy as our uh, moth friend. So those are some similarities and differences. Something else that's similar is usually all of our butterflies and moths are something called symmetric, which means that they have the same pattern on one half of their body as they do on the other. So if you were to just look at this and put it in a mirror, it would be the exact same pattern. So symmetry in both of these species is uh, very important. And that helps them to camouflage, that helps them to blend in. Moths are really good at blending into their environment because they're usually asleep during the day, so they have to blend in so they don't get eaten. Um, but you can tell it kind of looks like eyes staring back at you, which would probably scare a predator away. So when you're a scientist, they like to make diagrams to show different relationships. Um, and one of the diagrams they make that I think that you guys could make at home is a diagram called a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram is a diagram that shows relationships so you can compare and contrast the world around you. So we're talking about moths and butterflies today. So the one circle over here, this shows me characteristics only moths have. This shows me characteristics that only butterflies have. And then the center right here shows you uh, the similarities that they have together. So some similarities are they're both insects. Remember, we talked about that. They have six legs, three body parts, a head, a thorax, an abdomen. They have wings, a proboscis. We didn't talk about that, but I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. They go through metamorphosis, but their metamorphosis is slightly different. And they have scales on their wings. Um, and they both actually are symmetrical. Remember, that's when one side of their body has the same pattern as the other side. Remember, we talked about moths having feathery antenna like I have here. They're mostly nocturnal animals, so they're awake at night. They land with their wings open on leaves. They usually are not as brightly colored. And the moth caterpillar or larva turn into a moth pupa called a cocoon. Uh, they have thicker bodies and their bodies are usually hairy. Whereas our butterflies have straight antenna. They have mostly diurnal skills, so they're mostly awake during the day and asleep at night. They land with their wings closed. 
Uh, usually they are brightly colored, not all the time, but usually. Uh, the butterfly larva or the caterpillar turn into the butterfly pupa known as a chrysalis. They usually have thinner bodies and they usually have smooth bodies. So a Venn diagram, you can do that to compare all sorts of animals. You could compare a coyote and a jaguar. You could compare a frog and a toad. You could compare a lizard and a salamander if you wanted to see what things are similar and what things are different about animals in the animal kingdom. So I encourage you to do that. I would love to see your work, so put it in the comments below. Uh, but as promised, I'd show you what a proboscis is. So a proboscis, uh, both butterflies and monarchs, or both butterflies and moths have proboscis. Uh, and it's this long tube-like thing uh, that is like a tongue and it helps them to suck out the nectar or the sweet, sweet juices that are inside flowers. So when you hear the word nectar, I want you to think sweet juice. And it helps them to get the nectar out so that they can fill their tummies up with nutrients so that they can survive uh, and possibly lay eggs um, and uh, thrive and grow. Uh, and then just as kind of a reminder, I want you guys to know the life cycle of a moth. So it starts as an egg, it goes to a caterpillar, it turns into a cocoon, and then it turns into a moth. So I want you guys to know that the word cocoon is um, the pupa stage for just a moth, whereas a butterfly is a chrysalis. So that's a really important differentiation. Um, and I want you guys to understand that. And I also have some really cool moth cocoons here. Oh, look at these. They're pretty big, aren't they? So these came out of our Promethea moths last spring when they hatched. Uh, and here's another example as well. So these are the cocoons of moths. So uh, another thing you guys could do to celebrate moths is you could research moths uh, and find out what's your favorite moth. So remember moths land with their wings open. So see how their wings are open and not closed. So they sometimes look like jet planes. So I want you guys to see if you can craft your favorite moths. So you can research moths online. Uh, this is a Luna moth I created. Obviously, I threw in some creative touches. But all I did was take a piece of paper. I cut it into kind of a triangle. I rounded the edges off. And then I made a symmetric Luna moth. Obviously, this isn't perfect because I'm not nature and I make mistakes. But I thought that it turned out pretty fun. Um, and fun fact about Luna moths is they have these bottom long wings, elongated wings, and that creates vibration that helps to distract uh, and make echolocation hard for their main predator, which are bats. So they vibrate and make uh, bats unable to use their echolocation to find them. So I kind of made two different moths here, um, but they're both symmetric. So I want to encourage you guys to maybe Take the time to create some moths too, and I would love to see those posted in the comments below. So make a Venn diagram, compare relationships, and then also if you have time to do an art project or a craft, this one's really easy. All I used was markers and paper and some pipe cleaners. So thank you for listening. I hope you learned that moths are beautiful, unique creatures and the differences between moths and butterflies today. Thank you and have a wonderful day.